Mark, congratulations from Australia. The winning summit was a great success and I'd love to hear the story behind it. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Uh, I th yes, I think out of the blocks with no nothing, no infrastructure, no track record, no nothing, and to focus on a topic that we believe is hugely important to winning and nobody seems to discuss and nobody seems to train, out of the blocks, I think we did pretty well. Um, certainly, most of the speakers involved have been, you know, giving love. And I've interviewed quite a few of the people that were that attended the summit. Uh, and interesting, apart from saying a huge variety of speakers, some magnificent topics discussed, something we never talk about. But what they did say was the amount of love coming from all the speakers, which is odd you don't normally get that feedback and particularly when you talk about winning what you think about testosterone and uh to get all that love from uh, from speakers i think was quite something um so that's that's that and we will be doing more we'll be doing it uh, a week after the wimbledon grand slam and we'll be doing another one after the us open and it will evolve we learned some lessons obviously and it will evolve and we'll unfold that nearer the time to answer your question about why did we do it, uh, strangely, because it wasn't part of a master plan, but it was why I came out of semi-retirement about four years ago, uh, because through various leadership and personal transformation uh, learnings and trainings I was doing, and I thought one day, well, wouldn't it be cool if you could learn to be the best version of yourself whilst training for competition for pressure pack matches. That was the call. So it's not really for people that play tennis to get fit or to play tennis for social or even competitive recreational. This is not really for them. The, this is for people that play tennis because they love competing and they want to win. So that's why it was started. Uh, winning summit, training champions on and off the court. And what we did to make that happen and again it wasn't part of a master plan it unfolded when we had already launched was for every speaker and think about this for a second so we had 42 globally recognized speakers obviously from around the world disabled uh, women men uh, all colors shapes and sizes religions and nationalities coming together <clears throat> and the difference between this summit and every other tennis summit, that, and I'm not being at all discourteous to any other tennis summit, is that this wasn't a traditional speak about tactics or execution. It wasn't a traditional tennis summit. So I asked every speaker to take on the challenge of speaking about one word as an element of identity. So whether it was agile, adaptation, tolerance, control, culture, many words. We had 42 different words on there. And at the same time, having thought, researched, unpacked and put together that word at the same time to say, well, why is it, why are you qualified to talk about that word? What lessons have you learned in your lifetime on court to talk about that word? And we had, you know, Sam Jeller, uh, TED speaker, author, had a most horrible life that no one would choose. And he'd wrote, written a book and a TED speaker about how tennis saved my life. We had all sorts of amazing people within tennis and external from tennis shining their light. And I think, yeah, most talks were inspirational. Uh, and again, the brief to the expert speakers was, don't just be inspiring and don't just educate, give people one small thing to do every single day. And if they did that every day and exercise that muscle, which would be uncomfortable, then just wait for the 1% to the 1% to build until you have compound interest. You would have improved the skills and at some stage you would break through and you would become the training, which was the catchphrase. So if you're not tolerant and you would like to be more tolerant on and off court, what is the muscle to train 
and then do it regularly. So at some stage before you knew it, you would become tolerant. How about that? Yeah, that's great. So we trained pressure, we trained pressure and belief and composure and resilience and many other things. And people were able to choose up to four words and train that to create, choose and train their identity, who they were in the future, rather than carry on doing the same old, same old, which invariably is what life has given you as your identity. Hope that makes sense and doesn't think too much woo-woo. Look, very deep and um, very successful as well when I look at the content that came through and probably your best trait was the connection that you made right around the world. And nearly I saw a tennis think tank in the making. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. We had three Grand Slam tennis trainers currently. Uh, We had one guy that actually has trained in his past nine world number ones from Sampras uh, career and downwards. So a whole range of, you know, really, as you say, great, great savvy thinkers, practitioners in the world of tennis. So, yeah, great. Now, um, the next thing is you've started this great following uh, and I feel quite privileged that uh, tell me about the between the white lines. It's an, nearly like passing the baton on to the next uh, edition of your idea. Well, Andrew, how topical that you spoke at the winning summit about challenge. Mm-hmm. As I throw the baton over you to the challenge of staging between the white lines in Australia, which no doubt in years to come will also expand. Yes, we're looking so forward. Again, the, well, the idea between, between the white lines was that, and I really do think it's logical, there's nothing wrong at all about the national federations. There are great people in there doing great work. But, but I, in this world of, of dynamic exponential change, which is what we're going through, I would argue strongly that it's only the private sectors, the entrepreneurs, the innovators working at grassroots level that can make change happen. Uh, It's inconceivable to me that unless you are a talented entrepreneur, that you could be working within a company to affect major change. So the premise of Between the White Lines was that you have all these amazing coaches, tennispreneurs, we would call them, around the world, And for all the reasons you would know, they are acting in silos. They don't have time. They don't have energy. They don't have connections. They're just doing their bit postcode by postcode at a community level. So the aim was, well, how can we connect these people? How can we connect many people around the world that have problems with a few people that have the solutions and then match and connect tennispreneurs around the world to solve problems. So whether it's disabled, whether it's plus 55 sector, whether it's juniors, whether it's elite people, how can you fill up courts, postcode by postcode, build tennis? Uh, And that's what we did. And that's the baton that's being handed over to you. Well, it's um, it's a great baton to accept and also with a bit of an Aussie flavour in the Pacific. So we're looking forward to that. But also knowing that we will be sharing uh, the international uh, best practices because that's how you grow as a country. Yep. Yep. So it's it's a two-way thing. Wherever we're staging between the lines, we would like to think half of the content comes from international experts doing great things wherever they are in the world, but can prove that it's not what they're doing for how they teach tennis. It's more about, well, how do... What is it that you teach tennis that grows the game? Build, you know, recruit, retain, and return is one of the catchphrases. And if you've got a methodology, then bring it into Australia. And so Australia can learn from that. And ditto, people in Australia that are doing great things will share that to other parts of the world. And sometimes you'll be sharing it free, and sometimes you'll be consulting, or people will pay for your methodology. That's the aim. Look, that's a that's a great aim, and uh, we look forward to uh, this next um, 
passage of information and sharing right around the world. So um, yeah, looking very forward to starting that on the 12th. Our special word will be influencers. So people who have influenced the game and innovators. So uh, that's the probably the two things. And there's some amazing social media and amazing stories out there that we tend to share. Yeah. Yeah. In our ideal world, we would partner with people that have the finance and have the distribution, but don't have, and there's no reason for them to have the innovation. You know, in every other industry, you know, insurance and fintech and property, you have large companies that are sponsoring uh, an incubation and acceleration uh, platform because they need to find out, well, who are the bright young people inventing new things that would make a major difference to our market? And how can we sponsor them, partner them to provide them distribution that they don't have? It happens everywhere else. Why doesn't it happen in tennis? That is our aim. And, and I really like that. I can see that you've created like a podium for people to be welcome to speak and share. So uh, that, that'll be a, a great new endeavor. Great, Andrew. I, you have been fantastic. It is my pleasure and honor to partner with you to make BTWL happen in Australia, to do the same thing, build tennis postcode by postcode throughout Australia. Thank you very much, Mark. And um, I'll put this up as our lead into the, uh, the next level, which is great. Thank you. Okay, fabulous.